Next is the reproduction. So reproduction is accomplished by asexual and sexual methods. So the reproduction in penicillium which is accomplished by asexual and sexual methods. So sexual reproduction which is rare in penicillium and it takes place by the formation of non-motile asexual spores. And here the reproduction, asexual reproduction which is rare, sorry, the sexual reproduction which is rare in penicillium and the asexual reproduction is by the formation of non motile asexual spores, the conidia, which are brown in chains and erect branches of the mycelia called conidio. So, here the asexual reproduction is by the formation of non motile asexual reproduction is by the formation of non motile asexual spores, non motile asexual spores the conidia so the asexual spores is called the conidia and this conidia which are brown this conidia which are born in chains on the erect branches of the mycelia so this conidia which are formed this conidia which are formed on the erect branches of mycelia conidia which are formed on the erect branch of mycelia and that what we called as the conidio Conidio form. At the time of asexual reproduction, so at the time of asexual reproduction, at the time of asexual reproduction, mycelia arise erect. At the time of asexual reproduction, mycelia arise erect. Aerial hyphae called conidio form. And this structure, what is called as the conidio the conidia in spenzelian lack a distinct food cell. So, the conidia in penzelium, conidia in penzelium, which lacks food cell, which lacks food cell. So, here the absence of food cell. So, this is the food cell. We have discussed what food cell in the previous class. So, this food cell which is absent in penzelium. So, in penzelium, the food cell which is absent, and here the mycelia which arise erect vertically to a more or less definite height in some species the conidia are unbranched in some species this conidia are unbranched in most species they branch repeatedly towards the free end in most of the cases this conidia are branched okay at the end of the unbranched conidia clusters of sp uh, finger shapes steric matter are developed so here the figure you can see the figure of conidia 4 over there and you can see that at the end of the unbranched conidia foods clusters of finger shaped structure what we call as the steric matter and this steric matter which by abstraction produce rows of conidia so here you can see that this is the steric matter so this is the conidia 4 and here the conidia 4 which is branched here the conidia 4 which is branched and the finger shaped clusters what we called as the finger shaped clusters what we called as the steric matter so here the steric matter which are arises steric matter which are arises so these are the finger like structures called as the steric matter so this finger like structures called as the steric matter this finger like structure called as the steric matter and this steric matter which produces rows of conidia and on the steric matter you can see that a rows of conidia is over there rows of conidia in the species with branch conidia for the tip of each conidia for is terminated by a wall of branches known as the mitilia. So, in the branched, in the branch conidia four. So, this is a branched conidia four, and this structure what we called as the mitilia. So, in the species with branched conidia four, the species which having branched conidia four, the tip of each conidia four is terminated by a wall of branches. So, here you can see that a wall of branches over there, and this wall of branches is called as the mitilia. On the figure you can see that and each medulla finally terminates into a tuft of uninucleate bottle shape 
branches which are called serignatas of fillets and each vetula later developed as steric matter and this steric matter is otherwise called as fillets okay the gonidia actually in basic petal chains from the apex of each steric matter and here the gonidia abstracted in basic petal chains from the base of the oh sorry not from the base from the ap apex of the steric matter the gonidia form along with its branches metilla steric matter and gonidia in basic petal chains look like a brush like structure known as the pencilis so on the figure you can see that it's all together the steric matter metilla and the gonidia which looks like a brush like a brush shaped structure and that brush shaped structure what we called as the pedicles so here all this metula steric matter and the conidia folds which together forms a brush shaped structure and this brush shaped structure what is called as a pencilis in certain species the conidia form make it aggregated in fascicles or compacted to form structures called corymbi so in certain species the conidia form may become aggregated in fascicles so in certain species conidia form in certain species conidia form aggregated in certain species conidia form aggregated and compacted to form structures called corymbi in certain species the conidia form compacted and form the structure called corymbia from the tip of each steric matter conidia abstracted in chain and on that from the tip of each steric matter conidia abstracted in chain each steric matter is a flat sheet cylindrical body so here the steric matter which is flask shaped cylindrical body the steric matter which is flat shaped cylindrical flat shaped cylindrical body which after certain length narrows into a spore producing tube so this is a this steric matter which is a flat shaped cylindrical body and so, uh, after reaches some height it is narrows into a spore producing tube the nucleus in the steric matter sterigma divides and one nucleus migrates into the narrow apex of the sterigma so the nucleus in the sterigma divides so the nucleus in the sterigma nucleus in sterigma nucleus in sterigma divides and one nucleus migrated into nucleus in sterigma divides and one nucleus migrated into the narrow apex of sterigma so nucleus in sterigma divides and one nuclei one nuclei migrate to the narrow apex migrate to the narrow apex of the sterigma migrates to the narrow apex of sterigma the terminal portion of the sterigma is then separated by a septum from the parental cell as a short uninucleate cell the conidium and the terminal portion of the sterigma is then separated by a septum so this is a steric matter this terminal portion which is separated by a septum from the parental cell as a short uninucleate cell the conidium when it is fully grown it is separated by a septum from the parental cell and they assumes the size and shape characteristic of the species so when the fully grown when it is fully grown it is separated by a septum so when it is fully grown it is separated by a septum it is separated from a septum from the parental cell so when it is fully grown it is separated by a septum and detached from the parental cell and after that they assumes a certain shape and size after it is separated another conidium is formed so that a chain of conidia is formed at the end of the sterigma in basic petal succession that is the oldest conidia lying at the end of the chain so after it is separated another conidia is formed so after it is separated another conidia is formed so that a chain of conidia which can be formed at the end of each sterigma in basic petal succession so after detaching one conidia another is formed so it forms a basic petal succession that is the oldest conidia lying at the end of the chain that means oldest conidia which is lying at the end of the chain when the conidia is fully grown it secretes a distinct wall 
from the wall of sterigma so when the conidia which becomes fully grown this conidia which is fully grown it forms a wall of sterigma it forms a wall of wall of sterigma the wall of conidium may fuse completely or partially with parental cells so this wall may completely or this may completely or partially fuse with parent cell the conidia are typically globous so here the structure of conidia which is globose or ovoid elliptical or pyriform and looks like glass beads under the microscope so this conidia which are globose ovoid or elliptical or pyriform the conidia thus formed are typically globose typically globose ovoid elliptical elliptical or pyriform and look like glass beads under the microscope the wall of conidia may be smooth or variably roughened and the wall of conidia walls of conidia which may be smooth sometimes it may be smooth and variously roughened and variously roughened the conidia generally uninucleate but become multinucleate in many species so it is uninucleate and in many species it is multinucleate the conidia are maybe bluish greenish or plain in pale in color so the conidia which are blue bluish or greenish that's why it is termed as blue or green mops or pale in color the color of conidia is responsible for the characteristic colony color of various species of penicillin and this color of conidia which is responsible for the characteristic color colony color of various species of penicillium and the color of conidia which is responsible for the color of the colony and conidia become detached and are blown away by wind and when the conidia uh, attains its maturity and it detached and blown away and blown away by wind blown away by and each conidia under favorable conditions and the conidia which is detached and blown away by wind under favorable condition germinate by a germ tube and under favorable condition the conidia which is blown by wind uh, under favorable condition the conidia which is blown by wind germinates through a germ tube and gives rise to new mycelium and gives rise to new mycelium.